I spent most of the year of 2023 with a very high level of stress and anxiety. During Maddie's pregnancy, we faced many concerns from the doctors at what seemed every visit. Over the pregnancy, we were on pins and needles. And honestly, it kind of got to the point where we dreaded going to the doctor, uh, where a lot of times she would look forward to it. Uh, but we were fearful uh, because we didn't know what they were going to be concerned about this time. Now, we have a beautiful and healthy baby girl now. Uh, and it's really only in retrospect that I can look at this and look back at the past year and see how much it weighed on me. Uh, if, you, if you ask my wife, um, it's, it might be a little bit to a fault, but I am a very solution-based person. Uh, when I see a problem, I like to tackle it with a plan of action. Uh, you can identify different outcomes. Uh, you can identify different paths to get to that outcome. And then once you decide on your desired outcome and your desired path, you make a plan and you follow it. It's problem solving 101. Uh, and and to, to kind of this point in my life, with, with some other exceptions, but uh, most, most of my problems uh, to this day uh, can typically be solved. Uh, or at least I can improve my desired outcome by some sort of input uh, from myself. Uh, for example, I can't stop a hurricane, but I can make preparations, and I can be prepared for the event. I can't stop how cold it's going to get, but I can prepare my house and prepare my family for, uh, you know, what may come uh, to the best of my ability. So even though I can't solve the overall problem, there is still something I can do to improve my ultimate outcome. But this past year, we found ourselves in a place where there was nothing we could physically do to improve the concerns that the doctors had. There was no plan. There was no preparation. There was no medicine. There was no procedure, nothing. We would just have to wait until the next appointment and ultrasound for more information. There was one thing that we could do though, and it was the only thing we could do that would possibly help. And it turns out it's the most important thing and powerful thing that a person can do. We prayed. We prayed for the health of our baby. We prayed for strength and comfort. We prayed for guidance. We thank God when we receive good news. We prayed that our struggles and concerns did not affect our ability to function or parent our toddler. We prayed for the peace and strength to accept any bad news that we may receive. And even at one point with all the different doctor's visits and seeing the specialists that we had a specialist that we visited stop at the end of the appointment, ask if he could pray with us. And he said a prayer for our unborn baby. And um, it's just a really powerful moment. But with, with all the prayer, uh, I, I did have quite a few low points. Uh, you get in your head and you start thinking about everything. And um, I remember one day uh, talking to my dad on the phone and... Uh, I just told him, what's the point? Like, why? why? Why do I need to pray? The doctors told us this, and um, that's what it is. You know, you can't change that. And uh, the conversation up until that point, um, my dad had had a comforting tone. He was trying to reassure me. Um, but when I said that, he changed his tone to a very stern, uh, I'd venture to say borderline angry tone. And he warned me saying, don't you dare limit what God can do. And I'm ashamed to admit that I had that moment of doubt, but in that moment that I was blinded by fear, my dad reminded me and opened my eyes to remember that God is in control. So from this struggle, I have two spiritual takeaways. And they may seem novel to you sitting here, uh, but at that time in my life, they were very profound thoughts. One is, you got to pray to God, and you got to cast your worries on him. Pray to him for the things you need, but always remember to thank him for what he has given you. And also remember, 
that God is the best preparation and plan of action for any trial you face. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. This was very much a growing opportunity uh, for me and my family to give thanks in all circumstances. But even in trial, there is so much to be thankful for and to realize that. What happened and what we went through was the will of God. And I'm thankful for our trials because through that we were able to grow closer to God. I also feel that I have a, a bit of a better grasp on the phrase, pray without ceasing. Uh, I found myself at very random times, sitting at my desk in the middle of a project, sitting on the couch during a commercial break, uh, driving home from work, and many, many other random places, stopping and having a conversation with God. Sometimes it was as simple as, please God. And I knew that he knows what my heart needs. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous hand. And 1 Peter 5, verses 6 through 10 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you had suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. God will strengthen you, and he will lift you up. Nothing has ever sounded more comforting than God's hands lifting me up when I am too weak to do it on my own. This world is full of trials, full of hardships and temptations, all with the goal of pulling us away from God. But if we stand firm in the faith, it's through God's grace, we will be called to his eternal glory. And the second spiritual revelation or whatever I had said earlier, I already forgot, um, spiritual takeaway. Uh, that I had, as novel as it may sound, is that nothing is impossible for God. God has the power to do anything and everything we could ever imagine. In this case, he can heal the sick. But m most importantly, he can save us from sin and from eternal death. And this statement that nothing is impossible for God reminds us that even though we face trials and hardships, there is always hope because with God, all things are possible. In Luke 1, when the angel's telling Mary that she will have a child even though she's a virgin, uh, and she says, well, how is this possible? The angel responds to her questioning and says, for with God, nothing is impossible. Jesus echoes this statement in the parable of the rich man in Matthew 19, as he's telling the disciples that it's easier for the camel to go through the eye of the needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven they reply to him saying, this is impossible. How is, how is that? How will anyone be saved? Uh, or who will be saved were their words? And Jesus responds, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. As I've said, life is full of trials. We will be tested over and over. And the devil will use all types of methods to get us to question and doubt God and his power. But one of the most powerful tools we have is prayer. Pray to God when you're struggling. Pray to him when you're happy. Pray to God and give thanks for all we have. And remember that he will lift you up when you are weak. Through God, we can find strength and hope, even in the hardest trials we face. Maybe you need the prayers of your brothers and sisters tonight at Bel Air, here at Bel Air. Or maybe you need to give your life over to Christ and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Whatever it is, you can do forward now as we stand and sing.